Hi guys! So today, let's discuss learning theories. So, be, but before discussing the learning theories, um, we have I have to incorporate incorporate sa sa kanang Maslow's hierarchy of needs because I've noticed based sa inyong outcomes sa inyong exam, nagihapo yung mga student na wala na kagets like sixty percent at of one hundred percent naglisod bag sa bot sa Maslow hierarchy of needs. Okay, guys, sa inyong hang grado, um, you can um as a sort of recall. Wait, ang inyong hang grado kasi 30% inyong activity, 40% mauna inyong exam, pinakadako, di ba, mauna nga to, based sa atong orientation. 20% ang quiz na to, and then 10% ang attendance. Okay, wala na po na problema ng attendance, guys, as long as tanawin ninyo ang lecture, okay? Ang ako agi na tagaan na mo ta perfect attendance, kasi gusto na ta kamot gusto na mo taga ang chance nga magtanog lecture anytime you want or shall I say ka nang magtanog lecture kung as long as matanaw ninyong lecture so that's my point so okay na ko Anna that's why um, nahatagan ta mo tanog perfect attendance sa 10% diriragin mo nagdaog sa 40, 20, and 30 gets ninyo okay now here you can see it's a pyramid like ba diba? makita nyo sa pinakatumoy pinakagamay siya na portion Pinakagamay siya na portion, pasabot siya ang pinakagamay na to na needs. Pinaka-lowest need. Pag matpansin mo, pinakadako ang physiological, siya ang pinakadako na mura siya o ka ng, di ba, sa diagram. So, pasabot siya ang may pinaka-importante. So, nung siya, talking about physiological needs that comprise air, water, food, shelter, deep clothing, reproduction, safety needs naman is personal security, employment, resources, health property, um, being fired at to your job without even um, worrying sa safety needs, okay? Love and belongingness naman is friendship, intimacy, family, and sense of connection. Ha, most of you guys got the correct answer here in love and belongingness, so congratulations. Now, in self-esteem naman, it should be respect, um, status, academic achievements, recognition, ganyan. That's the esteem part of the diagram. Self-actualization is acceptance, okay? So, most of you got the, the wrong answer in self-actualization. When we say self-actualization, it's like you are accepting, you are recalling your past, tapos i-accept ni mo siya, which is healthy. I-accept ni mo na yung mga achievement, tira na yung taman. So, baon ni siya, ang ato, ang di mo malibog, ha? Kasi some of you sabi ko lowest to highest. So dapat inyong arrangement from self actualization pa dulong dere. Pero naagi hapon gahig ulo nagsugod og physiological needs. And always remember guys, you really have to follow this instruction and the direction. Kay kung ako ajun mong gi, gi pang zeruhan na aji mga student nang nagsugod og physiological needs where in fact ang akong instruction is you arrange from lowest to highest. So unsa may pinaka lowest? self-actualization. Next would be esteem, love and belongingness, safety needs, and physiological needs. So, next time, guys, I want you to please, please, please follow the instruction. Okay? Now, let's proceed to the actual lecture for today. So, what is learning theory? Learning theory is a coherent framework and a set of integrated um, wait, let me see. Integrated conducts and principles. Sa naman to eh. Sorry. That describe, explain, or predict how people learn and how learning occurs. So there are three major learning theories that we have to discuss. The first would be behaviorist, cognitive, and social learning. Now let's discuss first the behavioral theories of learning. So, this is actually formulated by John B. Watson. Okay, don't be confused with Gene Watson. The Gene Watson um, um, formulated the caring theory way back sa ato, theoretical foundation of nursing. Can you still recall? So, John B. Watson naman, in other word, is an American psychologist, psychologist who is the proponent of behaviorist theory and emphasizes the importance of observable behavior in the study of human beings. So, he defined behavior as a muscle movement and it came to be associated with stimulus response psychology. Now, let's discuss what is stimulus. What is stimulus? Yes. A stimulus, guys, is something that provokes or causes an action or response. Gikur, gik, unsa tawag ana? Gisumbag kasi mong 
partner that's already stimulus because you feel na parang nasakitan ka di ba physically um nag-inflict og pain sa imo ang itusukan ka because of IV cannulation so that's a stimulus kasi nasakitan ka so it could be like Another one would be, it could be like failing grade of a student will definitely encourage his or her study, his or her to study well in the next examination. So, I hope na mo mga yung anak ng mga mindset, di ba? So, kanin failing grade, bao na ang nga to ang stimulus. The past, the plural form of stimulus is stimuli. So, pagdaghan na, stimuli na siya. Pero pag isa ra, stimulus. So, kung mabagsak mo, that's, you have to consider it as a stimulus. So, you have, you have to consider it as a stimulus in order for you to um, do well or study in advance in the next examination. Okay? Okay. Maingan mo si Miss kay Kuan Kaayo. Kaya Real talk. Okay, maugida siya. So, what is learning? So, learning is a result of conditions or stimuli. So, our stimuli is, is referred to S in the environment and the learner responses is R, follow. So, this is known as an SR model of learning or the stimulus response theory. Okay, let's dig it deeper. Okay, in behavioral learning is based on the following. So, na atay respondent conditioning and we have also operant conditioning. Let's di first discuss the respondent conditioning. So, what is respondent conditioning? And number one would be classical or Fablobian conditioning. Okay, it is a process which influences the acquisition of new responses to environmental stimuli. So, natin mga term na dapat ninyong timan and diri, guys. A neutral stimulus elicits an unconditional response, okay? So, ang neutral stimulus, nag-elicit siya or nag siya o unconditional response, which is called as UCR. Through repeated pairings with an unconditional stimulus. So, sige, balik-balik kung ang unconditional stimulus, that would lead to unconditional response. So, sige, balik-balik ko ng UCS, maglinda siya o UCR. Gets ninyo? A neutral stimulus naman is a stimulus that has no particular value or meaning to the learning. So, let me give you an example or an illustration. For example, a 3 years old named Bell accidentally touched the flame. So, the flame is considered as NS or neutral stimulus, right? Now, she felt intense pain. Okay, that's considered unconditioned stimulus. And quickly withdraw her hands. That is UCR or air conditioned response. So, naka-facial pain. It's because of the stimulus being ano, inflicted to her. Then, nag-lead og response. Among tawag ana is unconditioned response. Okay? Two days later, the same experience happened. And a part of her ping finger was burnt. Now, the neutral stimulus, which is the flame, has now become the conditioned stimulus. Okay? Katong neutral stimulus lang unta nga, wala untay value sa isa ka tao, nahimo na siyang conditioned stimulus. It's because of the repeated pairing of UCS. Okay? Katong gibali kasi niya the day after. Okay? Subsequent. May mga subsequent mga happening. So, because of the uh, success, subsequent pairing of UCS or, or, or such thing that we call unconditioned stimulus, from neutral, na mo siyang condition. And the automatic withdrawal overhand has become the learned response. Okay? And always remember that learned responses may be unlearned if the occurrence of condition stimulus is not accompanied by UCS for a long period of time or interval. So, pwede ra siya makalimtan. It's because kung wala gyud siya giubanan sa UCS katong unconditioned stimulus, katong pain na nabati sa bata. So, that's that's we called as classical or Pavlovian conditioning. Okay? The second one would be systematic desensitization. It's another technique which is widely used in psychology and even in medicine to reduce pain, fear, and anxiety. Usually, systematic desensitization, guys, is a repeated and gradual exposure to fear-inducing stimulus under relaxed and non-threatening circumstances. We'll give the patient that sense of... Wait, ha? Nagha ako. Excuse me. 
this way. Non-threatening circumstances will give the patient the sense of security that no harm will come. So systematic desensitization is a is a is a um, procedure, guys, in wherein you gradually expose the client to a situation. Okay, like um, when you are administering medication, hina hina yun nai while approaching, explain nibo na ma magatagong tapal medyo hapdi ni gamay mama, so you don't need to worry because it's a normal process. That's systematic desensitization para ma decrease ang fear, ang anxiety sa atong pasyente. Okay? Like sa pag magtaod kag ay magkanulation ka or nagtaod kag dextrose, you have to gradually expose the patient mama na tong gamito ha. Normally, kasi that your response, mag-response ka sa pain, sakit ginin siya, ganyan, ganyan. That's systematic desensitization. And usually, guys, ginahimo ni siya sa mga na mga post-traumatic stress disorder na mga patient. This word or this concept is very common when you reach third year. Yeah, third year college sa nursing ninyo, of course, which is psychiatric in nursing, wherein most of the psychiatric patients are suffering from PTSD or um, ang ilahang mga therapy is more on systematic desensitization. Okay? I know it's quite confusing because wala pa modera nga level, but you will understand along the way. And there, the third one would be stimulus generalization, okay? It is the tendency to apply to other stimuli which was initially learned. Okay, stimulus generalization. Kung sa tingin mo hang na-learn from the previous stimulus, you can actually initially learn by that and you have you initially apply that into your second encounter sa stimuli or sa stimulus. The fourth one would be spontaneous recovery is usually applied in relapse prevention programs. So, this may also explain why it is quite difficult to completely eliminate unhealthy habits and addictive behaviors for patients who are suffering from alcoholism, drug abuse, and smoking. Kasi guys, ang explanation ng spontaneous recovery, like, um, na yung mga pasyonata yung mga kailangan, di ba? Na yung alcoholism, mga drug, mga drug addicts, or na experiencing drug abuse, or even smoking, di ba? Sa nicotine. Um, na itan ni si Yes, mag mag stop sila mag stop sila for a while but naagit tendency nga mabalik yun na nila mabalik yun na nila because that's their kanang naanda nila that's what they called that's why this is applied in relapse prevention program especially katong mga nagaparihab na mga client nagaparihab sila because of not because they are mentally ill but because they cannot control their nicotine um uh, needs or they cannot control the the amount or the volume of of alcohol na ginabutang or gina intake nila sa ilang lawas so this is what we called as spontaneous recovery which is primarily based on the um behaviorist theory ni John Watson Okay, so um, I think the next presentation will be presented to you guys as soon as possible. So just make sure that you have watched this lecture for today so that you it will give you additional information and try to encourage each other to watch the lecture um, anytime you want. Of course, pag na may available time. I know you're preparing so much um, activities as this, as of the moment so you have your related learning ano um return de demonstration but of course you really have to manage your time accordingly i-balance gyud ninyo yung time guys ha dili lang mo isa lang mo ka subject mag-focus or dili lang kay sa duha lang but of course you have to balance your you have to manage your time you allocate your resources you you spend your time wisely because kana gyud ang part sa inyo ha as a student okay and that would be all guys for today and I hope you learned something sa ating lecture and see you soon sa ato ang next lecture. Thank you for listening.